Okay, so today we have a very talented cake decorator with us. Uh, we have uh, the the very talented Rachel Tufel, is that right? That's correct. Okay, I, <laughs> I am not the best with names sometimes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Me neither, so it's okay. <laughs> All right, and so yeah, welcome Rachel, we're so happy to have you here with us. Thanks, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. All right, well, we are going to get started with uh, a little bit about you, and then we will move on to uh, to the, the training portion. So I want to talk about you a little bit. Um, let's see. Let me know about you. You've been, you are self-taught, like a lot of cake decorators. That's correct. I mean, I think so many of us, um, you know, we start in one career and then we just uh, maybe aren't happy or whatever the case may be and, you know, sort of looking for that creative outlet. So that's certainly uh, my story along with many other cake designers out there for sure. Um, I was actually a physical therapist and exercise physiologist with a specialty in cardiac rehab um, for several years, about seven uh, years before I made the switch over to cake design. So. Um, it was a passion and a hobby that turned into a full-blown business. So, awesome! That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, um, what what really got you into cake decorating? How did you how did you find it? Yeah, so I actually, um, well, as a physical therapist, I hated my day job. Um, I loved working with people, but there's just a lot of politics with insurance companies and things that I didn't care for. Uh, mm -hmm. So I started just trying to find something more as a stress relief at the end of the day. Um, I sought out local classes um, in all sorts of things, actually, and it wasn't cake uh, decorating at first. I did flower arranging and uh, sculpting and glass blowing and bead making and um, I, I finally landed on cake decorating, which was fabulous, um, and really enjoyed it. I started with the Wilton series, like again, many people out there just looking for something to do, and um, and I really loved it. And started making cakes for friends and family, um, kind of as a side uh, to my main job, and ultimately um, realized that that's really what I wanted to be doing, and so took those few steps to kind of get myself going in a more professional direction rather than just doing it for friends, and um, started my own business. So it's um, it's been 13 years since I took my first cake decorating class, and I've been in business now for just over seven. So. Wonderful. That's yeah. great. So you have had the opportunity to do a Food Network Challenge. I know that's something that a lot of people really wanted to do, and now it's gone. You know, so I know. Let, it's so sad. About, I know it is, isn't it? That's not like everybody's dream was to do yes. <laughs> a Food Network Challenge. So tell us about yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I, um, again, like many, wanted to be on the show and tried for a couple of years to get on the show and it just didn't work out and um, I just kind of kept in touch with the producers and kind of sent them some of my new stuff here and there and finally got the opportunity to be on the show and um, fortunate to go back uh, three times actually um, and we placed second in our first two appearances and finally won our last time out. So it's quite nice. the exciting, yeah, quite exciting. <laughs> Thank you. And that was, was a, a, lot of a Halloween one. That That's correct. It was Halloween ghost stories, and uh, we created a large chair with a little girl sitting on it, with this giant skeleton kind of looming over top of her. So uh, it was it was quite fun, and they do re-air it every Halloween. So check it out oh, this cool. October. Yay! Yeah. What a great one to have won because they yes. re-air it all the time. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, good. Congratulations on the win. <laughs> All right, so you have been published in, you know, magazines and things like that. Do you want to tell us about that and, and maybe how you, you were able to be published and, you know, how that all came about? Yeah, sure. Um, so we've been on quite a few uh, different magazines, actually. Um, some of the more popular ones being The Knot and Brides, um, which is certainly such an honor to be a part of, first of all. Um, 
oftentimes it's just about getting your work out there and trying to share it with um, people like yourself and and other leaders in the industry um, and then reaching out specifically to the editors of some of the magazines and I've been fortunate um, a lot of the editors will reach out to cake designers and so that certainly has happened to me as well I actually flew out to New York in April with a cake um, and it'll be in Brides magazine actually to hit newsstands here very very soon um, so that's really exciting for me, just to have my work um, put in top top magazines like Brides and The Knot. And um, you know, I, I just encourage anybody who wants to, you know, experience that to reach out to them as well. If they haven't reached out to you first, you know, they are always mm -hmm. up for seeing people's work. So email mm -hmm. it over. You know, just make it interesting. I think um, that's always uh, what I, the feedback that I get is you need some sort of eye popping uh, picture, <laughs> and you also need a really great description. Otherwise. Um, um, you know, they get so many inquiries every single day. You've got to stand out somehow. So absolutely, yeah, that's very, very true. You have to find your own unique something. That's correct. So that's that's very true. Um, and like you said, like you know, it, contacting people like myself, I honestly just to to let you guys know, I love to get. Um, you know, pictures from you guys. I love to get information, you know, saying, hey, we have a cool training coming up, or, you know, that or I have something cool that I could share. You know, mm -hmm. we love to hear stuff like that. It makes my job easy. <laughs> so, so, yeah, go ahead and share away, guys. <laughs> love to hear it. Okay, so, and then uh, you have actually become a Craftsy instructor. That's correct. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's really exciting. It's very exciting and of course honored to be a part of the uh, designer team over there at Craftsy. Um, they not only do a fabulous job um, you know, guiding us through the process but then allowing us to really truly share as much as we possibly can with all of our students and the platform is just amazing to be able to ask questions and have, have the instructor ourselves are truly answering all those questions that come through so you know, we encourage you to be on the platform and really interact not only with the instructor but again with the other students in the class too but um, I just recently launched our cake design made simple the wedding dress um, which is truly a step-by-step -step process um, that allows you to learn from designing concept, um, gathering inspiration, and creating a sketch, all the way through implementing every single one of the steps to create a bride, bridal gown inspired cake. Um, and I do it in a lot of different fashions too, so uh, there's a lot of great information in that particular class. Well, you know, a lot of brides, this is a really popular thing to do. You know, a lot of brides want a cake that's going to be similar to their wedding dress, you know, or take elements from. Yeah, correct. And and that's a really great and easy way to design a cake yeah. that that's going to be so personal to her, you know. And so, so this is a really great class. I really am excited about this one. Yeah, it's okay. it's. The beauty of this particular class is, um, you know, we kind of teach you step by step how to evaluate the dress and then how to implement um, the design itself. But if you think about it, the bridal gown is one of the first things that the bride goes and looks for. It's usually the most exciting piece of the entire process for her. So to be able to pull it to cake is, it, to me, that much more exciting um, for her and to kind of show her off a little bit. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, and you guys um, should be able to see a picture of this, um, of the some of the cakes that are taught in here. Um, Rachel, if you want to click on that uh, that little screen for you, you have control of yours. But everyone else will see what I put up for them. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so but these are these are the pictures of, of some of the cakes that you teach on on this um, class that you that you have. That's correct. Uh, they are gorgeous. Thank gorgeous. you. <laughs> and you guys, uh, this is really exciting. This is the first time we've been able to offer this, but we have a discount for you guys for the Craftsy class. So, um, and it's it is just a temporary thing. So you have the next you know 24 hours to be able to go on and, and buy this class at the discount. So we're we're excited about that for you guys. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, definitely a really, really good class to to be able to uh, take. Um, also, it looks like you have a picture of a mold on here that you 
You go yeah. into teaching how to make molds. Yeah, that's cream. correct. Um, so within the Crafty class itself, I will actually teach how to create a lace mold, and you can really use any types of laces. Um, but it's a step by step. It's very very easy to learn in how to do it yourself. And this particular one is made from a silicone plastique, so um, it's very fast acting. You can have a completed mold within about twenty to thirty minutes. So it's pretty fast. Awesome. Okay, and so you guys also, I was able to pull some strings and get you guys a discount on the silicone plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you go to makeyourownmolds.com, uh, you can actually get 15% uh, off of this silicone plastic if you uh, type in CakeFu in the, the promo code when you uh, go to checkout. So yay! yay. <laughs> I, I was pretty excited about that one. <laughs> Everybody loves a good discount. So. <laughs> Of course, of course. We've got all kinds of fun stuff today. And at the end of the, the training today, we're going to be doing a giveaway for a Craftsy class, uh, for Rachel's Craftsy class. So uh, make sure that you stick around and um, enjoy our, you know, our, our wonderful information we're going to get from Rachel. So we're going to jump right into it now and Great. talk about uh, what we're going to be learning today. Um, this mold is kind of um, a step into what we're going to be uh, learning. So I'm just going to let you take it from here and and go ahead and teach everyone. I thought this was really cool. I've never seen the mold kind of inverted the other way so that it's actually an yeah. impression. Yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of uh, something that I uh, had to figure out. I had no choice. I had a client who wanted a custom uh, ribbon on her cake and um, I of course couldn't find any sort of stamp or impression mat or anything that matched it. So I, I created this um, ultimately uh, out of necessity, which is always a good thing. Um, but um, what we're going to use here is um, the Make Your Own Molds it has a lot of different types of silicone. And this one happens to be called a two-part copy flex. And it's um, it's very similar to silicone plastique, just in that this one is in liquid form rather in a clay form. So um, that's the only difference between the two types of silicone that we um, use, one in the Craftsy class, and uh, this is a slightly different one. Um, but ultimately, what you need is um, a pattern, whatever pattern you want that to be. It can be something completely free form, like a flower, or it could be something very geometric, like in this case, kind of like a honeycomb design. Um, you'll need a rolling pin and some safety clay. The safety clay is also available uh, online at um, Make Your Molt. So, so you'll need your pattern and you'll need safety clay. The safety clay ultimately is what you're going to etch your pattern into. So it's definitely something that you absolutely need um, in order to create this process. Um, you'll also need a rolling pin to roll that out and then you'll need some sort of container in order to enclose both your um, uh, your clay and then uh, of course to pour the silicone into that you need some sort of container that's going to hold it and in this case all I have done is trim down a bakery box so you can use something that you probably already have available to you you don't need a special piece um, in this particular case um, you will see a lot of people use um, a plastic acrylic box as well and it's reusable and you can certainly do that so up to you I love, I love the idea of being able to do it you know, on the cheap, you know, because that's what right. making molds are all about. You don't want to, you don't have to spend a fortune on it, so that's great. Exactly, and I am all about trying to repurpose things and, and turn it into something else, so mm -hmm. um, I think a bakery box is a perfect scenario here, and it's fairly cheap and inexpensive. I so. love that. That's wonderful. Yeah. So what you want to do is, I've just put dowels on both sides of the clay and rolled my pin over top of that, and that's really just to make a completely level, even surface in your clay. Um, and then uh, you'll want to then trim it down so that it fits within your container, um, whether you use the bakery box or a, a pre-made box. Um, so I think we can move to the next slide on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so this is the box again, and it's just sitting over top of the safety clay. And I really just kind of mark this a little bit with my ruler and a little um, uh, veining tool is what I like to use. It's probably my favorite tool. I go nowhere without my tool. Um, but mark it, and then you can trim it down. You want to put it inside your box just to make sure it fits. Trim away any excess if you need to. You want to try to get as close of a fit as you can, and then that way the silicone doesn't you know, run over your edges here. Um, so. Remove the clay back out of it, 
And then you're going to put a little bit of shortening on the back side of your uh, printed template. So again, you can make whatever pattern you want on this and then just print it out from your computer. Flip it over, put some shortening on it. This just is going to keep it from fully sticking to your silicone. Um, or sorry, not your silicone, your clay. Um, you don't want to pull the clay away as you're etching in. So you want it just to um, kind of nicely peel the paper back off and leave your uh, clay nice and smooth. So. Okay, so you just use regular paper. For it's regular paper. computer paper. Yeah, okay. nothing special. And again, the reason for the shortening is just to make sure it so doesn't stick. stick. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. So now I've put my pattern directly over top of the silicone, or sorry, I keep saying silicone. I'm really ready to get there, aren't I? Um, yeah. <laughs> so using, um, using a veining tool, if you have a very geometric shape that you can use a ruler on, by all means, make some straight lines with your ruler. Um, but I'm just tracing over every single one of these lines. And you want to make sure that you push firm enough so that it leaves a mark, but not so hard that you cut through the paper. Um, ultimately, you're just trying to give yourself a pattern that you can then go back and groove. So. Okay, great. You don't want it to indent too much. Correct. And then at this point, this is really just to go back in and make those lines as deep as you'd like them to be. So depending upon the application of how you're going to use your mold, you might want this really thin, you might this want this really deep. So it kind of depends on your application. Um, and you'll see a little bit later on in the tutorial, I'll show you how I've used it and why I'm going as deep as I am with this particular mold. Um, but in this case, again, we're just using the veining tool and grooving each of those lines just to make it a little bit deeper. The silicone has to have a place to kind of fall and land in order to take on the pattern that you're creating. Perfect. And I love this pattern, by the way. Very. Thanks. I love the geometric. <laughs> Very Thank cool. you. And I, I want to point out, too, I really I made this on the computer in a PowerPoint presentation just using a hexagon shape and lining them up next to each other. So oh, it can cool. be that simple. It doesn't have to be anything very difficult. Awesome. Um, so once you've traced the pattern onto the uh, clay, put the clay back into the box. You just want to make sure you don't have any excess clay pieces left over. So as you're grooving your lines, if there's anything that's coming up from the clay, pull those little itty bitty pieces away. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. Um, and when you're putting it into the box, then again, make sure you're trying not to touch um, the clay too much on the top side because anywhere where you touch it will leave an imprint and the silicone cone is going to capture that imprint. So just try to keep your fingers from, you know, leaving too many finger marks on it. Perfect. And then um, I didn't show this part, but you just want to take your uh, two colors of silicone and you're going to mix them together really well so that they don't have any um, striations in color. So you want to make sure that you mix the white and the um, orange together until it makes one uniform color again. And then gently pour it into um, your box. And um, you can see that I'm pretty high up above the piece of clay. And that's really to try to work out some of those air bubbles that might have formed as you're stirring it together. So um, pour it from pretty high up. You know, you want to get at least um, you know eight to ten inches above the mold in order to get rid of some of those air bubbles. And then you can also gently tap the mold once all of the mm -hmm. silicone is in there. Just tap the mold, and some of those air bubbles will come back out as well. All right, that's a great tip to hold it up high because mm -hmm. it will. It'll get rid of a lot of the bubbles. And yeah. I wonder, you know, I off the subject, but I wonder if doing that with. Uh, Poured sugar would do the same. I would. Because I would imagine. What happens ultimately is it just gets such a thin stream that those air bubbles kind of pop out themselves. So yeah, exactly. that's a great, a great suggestion, Amelia. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some expert on sugar would know. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right. So this particular uh, type of coffee flax, the silicone, it takes about five hours uh, to fully cure. And my little test is just to grab the box and pull it away from the edge. If it comes away clean, it's probably ready. You can also kind of tap the surface. If it's sticky at all, let it sit a little bit longer. Um, but it should, um, it should just feel like a nice smooth piece of um, silicone when you're done with it. Nice piece of rubber. 
And then you'll want to remove um, the silicone from the uh, clay itself. Now you can see that a lot of the mold is um, coming, um, or I should say a lot of the clay is sticking to the mold. So uh, you just want to make sure you clean all of that clay back off. And a great trick is just to use some of the clay itself to adhere it. It's kind of like a bubble gum, you know, when you have a piece of bubble gum and it sticks to something else. If you push the bubble gum against that sticky part, it pulls it away. So uh, you can do that. You definitely want to wash this as well with some soap, again, just to get any residual um, uh, clay away from the silicone itself. But um, this is uh, probably one of the tougher pieces of this particular process is just making sure that it's totally clean and you get all the clay back off of that. And then just using a ruler, um, and this is kind of a key piece here, making sure that the um, the edge of your mat is straight. So when we get a little later in the process again, I'm going to use this straight edge piece in order to line it up on my cake. So if this particular edge is off at all, my pattern becomes off as well when I apply it to my cake. So you just want to use a ruler and trim, um, and you can measure from the edge Edge. For instance, in this particular pattern, the hexagon bottoms are very straight. So I just use my ruler just to touch off of the mold um, where it's elevated in order to cut away any excess. Um, and you want to do all four sides just to make sure you have a straight, clean, and level uh, mold. And that's what I have there. That's the finished mold. It's nice and clean, and um, it's got some straight edges on it. And um, this way, we can use it in a lot of dip different applications at this point. We can move to just applying it directly to cake, um, or we can actually imprint onto modeling chocolate, for instance, um, and create ribbons out of it. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this at this point. And this is um, just a fondant covered cake. You can actually use it on buttercream as well. It just has to be a more of a crusting buttercream so that when you imprint it, it doesn't come off with your silicone mold. Um, but what I've done is just applied a really light layer of powdered sugar onto the silicone mold itself. And then I'm going to um, press it onto the side of the cake. Now, there are a lot of impression mats out there. They're usually clear plastic. Um, there's diamond patterns. And, and dot patterns and all sorts of things. So um, this is a very similar process to that, only obviously using a custom mold um, to create a different pattern. And um, so ultimately, you're just going to apply the mold directly to the fondant, pushing smoothly and evenly as you work your way around. Um, and then, of course, you'll pull it off and apply it again. And this is just showing that it leaves the imprint right into the grooves of the fondant there. Um, and then you can. Uh, uh, kind of keep repeating that pattern as you go all the way around. Um, and there's a little trick with the mold that um, I just happened to stumble upon. Um, but if you use a fondant smoother on the back side of the silicone mold, it actually sticks really well. So you can kind of use that as a handle, um, which is kind of fun. Um, and it makes it a whole lot easier to make sure that you're getting even pressure as you uh, rotate the uh, mold all the way around your fondant. So. Awesome. I, I love this. I, you know, honestly, I've, I've seen, you know, making your own mold before. I, mm -hmm. And I've done it before. I've made my sure. own molds. But they've always been the concave, you know, where you stick something inside of it. So of to actually make an impression mat out of, out of the, the mold making material, I just, I looked at it all, well, duh! <laughs> that makes perfect sense! <laughs> so this is genius. I love it. I Thank you. Love it. Thank you. Again, it was out of necessity. I didn't have a choice. And I had actually looked at potentially having a custom stamp made because I use a lot of stamping tools and scrapbook tools within um, my design processes. And um, they were very expensive, obviously. And I thought, yeah. well, heck, I can I can do this. How It can't be that hard, right? Um, 
Um, and so I was really excited to be able to do this the first time, and I've done it a handful of times already. Um, and I literally just did this about four weeks ago. It was the first time I had tried it. So um, it's it's really easy to do, and um, I think the, the best part about this is that you can truly do any pattern that you want. You just have to be able to etch it into the clay. So um, this is just a uh, the next kind of step in the process is if for some reason you've applied this mold to the cake and it hasn't quite imprinted the way that you'd like, just go back with that veining tool and you can groove those lines a little bit more. Um, especially where you have to kind of line up your pattern consecutively, it's uh, sometimes challenging to get it to line up perfectly. So this is a great way just to kind of grow in and groove one more time and make sure it's a seamless application all the way around the cake. So. And that's my favorite tool. I have to say that I love, <laughs> I love my veining tool. <laughs> yeah, those are those are pretty crucial. And <laughs> uh, okay, you have your, you know, I, you know, a, a veining tool and a ball tool. Those two are just, you know, they're indispensable. You can't do without those. <laughs> I 100% agree. I swear, I keep my veining tool, my ball tool in my pocket mm -hmm. at all times. So. <laughs> oh, and a, and a serrate, you know, some yeah. some type of a sharp blade. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Whether you use like a, you know. Whatever kind of blade you use, that's <laughs> yeah. that's pretty crucial too. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree. Good stuff. So this is the final finished cake. That's you correct. Gorgeous. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. And so yeah, pretty flower on top, and and that just makes such a you know such a nice you know addition to what could have been just a very plain cake. Absolutely. And and it's custom made. I love that. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I wish I had thought of this years back, <laughs> years ago. There's so many times when I just think back and think, oh, that would have been so useful to me. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, and trust me, I feel the same way. It's kind of like, you know, I had that aha moment of like, why haven't I been doing this for years? But, you know, sometimes it just takes that right kind of um, grouping of concepts and ideas and things that you, you know, pull together and then uh, something magical just happens from it, which is wonderful. So. Awesome. Okay, so if you guys have any questions for Rachel, um, make sure that you go down uh, down below the screen. You there's an ask a question uh, box that you can ask all of your questions. Make sure that you're typing those in there throughout. Um, I I have found that there is a delay. Last time I did a training, I didn't see any questions, and so I moved on. And about 30 seconds later, here come all the questions. So <laughs> we're going to give you guys a little bit of time this time um, and uh, talk about the, the recipe that Rachel is sharing with us today. And uh, make sure that you get your questions asked um, soon so that uh, I, I will give you guys some time to, to get those questions in. I, I apologize for last time. All of you guys had wonderful questions, and I just skipped over it because I didn't know <laughs> that there was any kind of a delay. So, okay. Oh, and here's a close-up of the pattern. There you go. Very pretty. And again, I really like that pattern. It's, it's you know, the hexagon shape, but it adds more to it. Yeah. Yeah. So. When you line them up and then create that diamond in between, it just, uh, I think it has a little bit more of a sophisticated look. So. Yeah. Well, and then you can look at it, in, you know, in different ways and, and see the hexagon, and then you can see the triangles, and then you see a bigger, you know, hexagon yeah. inside of it, and it's like, it, it just makes a lot more interest, too. I love that. <laughs> For sure. All right. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the recipe. Make sure you guys are typing in your questions for Rachel. <laughs> so, okay, this is salted caramel apple crumb bars. This is like everything I love oh. all in one recipe. Oh Me my gosh, too. this is heaven. <laughs> Um, so as as I'm sure a lot of people, especially in the wedding and cake industry, um, Pinterest is my new best friend and mm -hmm. has been for a little while now. Um, but I happened to stumble upon this one, and uh, I don't always look at my pins right away, but I happen to need something for dessert for a potluck, and I get tired of making cake, you know, um, mm -hmm. because as a business, it you know, it's not that it's not fun anymore. It just isn't always your go-to thing when you have to go to a potluck. Um, but I went to my dessert pin page and saw that I had pinned this probably like six times. I thought, I, I better actually really? make this. <laughs> um, so I finally had an opportunity to pull it and make it, and uh, thank goodness I did. It is my go-to dessert at this point um, for 
anything non-cake at least, um, but it's uh, truly salted caramel on anything, fabulous. Um, and the apple crumb uh, piece of it is just to die for. Um, I did make one alterations. I was trying to eat a little healthier the first time that I uh, made this recipe, and I actually substituted a little bit of um, wheat flour instead of a unbleached flour. So. It gave it a little bit more of a nuttiness, and I, I just fell in love with it. So now I make it um, with a substitution of one cup of wheat flour in it, and it just has this rich, um, nutty uh, flavor to the crust. And it's probably one of the easiest uh, recipes I think I've ever followed. You literally throw almost all of your ingredients, um, as far as the crust is concerned, right into a food processor. You pat mm -hmm. it out into a pan. Um, you mix your apples and, and juice uh, together and some sugar and then uh, pour it over your crust and then put crumble on top. I mean, it really is that simple. Um, and then as far as the salted caramel goes, um, that's a really great, um, easy piece as well. You just have to be sure, be careful not to burn it because uh, most yeah. caramels mm -hmm. um, can turn to uh, an amber and burn pretty quickly. But um, I actually enjoy this uh, with or without the salted caramel. If you're uh, short on time, you can scratch the caramel all together. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can just throw some uh, some ice cream on top. It's really there. You good. go. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. Yep. I I say do both. <laughs> <laughs> ice yes. cream and salt and caramel. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> I I absolutely. I, honestly, everything about this is like my favorite dessert. I love <laughs> salted caramel. I love the the desserts with the crumble, and yes. I love apple filling. Oh, Fabulous. So you you totally hit it right on for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for those of you that are trying to frantically write this down, I'm actually going to post this on our website uh, later on today. Uh, so make sh you can uh, come back and, and find that, or you can watch the replay, which will be available. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you guys can go ahead and, and get the recipe that way. And uh, thank you for sharing that. Oh, my goodness. Of course. <laughs> so going to have to make that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our question and answer. Yay! Um, let me pull up some questions here. Okay. Um, yeah, I apologize for that noise, you guys, earlier on. I tried to mute it, but I was a little slow. Um, let's see. Not the questions yet. Hopefully they're rolling in soon. Okay. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting for the questions, um, tell us a little bit about, um, like, do you, do you have more than one Craftsy class? Is that I I don't. I have one crafty okay. class currently that just launched, mm -hmm. um, and I'm in the process of working on another special project mm -hmm. with Crafty. Um, I can't tell oh, any details yet. I'm so sorry. It's always oh, like the worst okay. thing. <laughs> right? Please. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm in the process of working with Crafty, and we'll be back in the studio in September um, once mm -hmm. wedding season is kind of over. So uh, so definitely be looking for something in late September, early October. I know um, we're really excited about the project that we have coming up. It's just uh, needs to be put on hold a little bit so we can get through wedding season. So, but um, Craftsy um, it just recently released a lot of uh, free videos. So I encourage all of you to go out and take a peek at their online uh, center. Um, I know Elisa Strauss just uh, released a free uh, basics fondant uh, class, which has been mm -hmm. fabulous for a lot, a lot of people. So I encourage you, even if you're not into purchasing something, that's totally fine. Um, but there's a lot of free stuff on Craftsy too, and they're blog always has some really great tips and tricks um, for the cake decorating crew. So awesome. definitely take a peek at it. Yeah, definitely. Okay, we have a question. Excellent. Um, let's see. One question is, how thick do you pour the silicone? 
So that's a tough question to answer. And I think, again, it depends on what your application is. Um, the mold that I made for you in this particular tutorial is only, um, it's, it's not quite a half inch deep. It's, um, it's going to depend on how deep your groove is for the pattern itself. And now the groove on my pattern is probably less than eighth of an inch. It's not very deep. Um, but the silicone itself is uh, between kind of a quarter inch and a half inch, somewhere in there. Um, I think uh, the sturdier the mold um, you need, if you need something really strong that you can push against that's not going to bend, then you want to go even thicker than that, probably closer mm -hmm. to a half inch. Um, but if you want it to be flexible, then you really need to kind of do that quarter to a half inch, not, not, too, not too thick. Okay, great. All right, I have someone asking an, an interesting question. Uh -oh. um, they're asking about, well, they're asking on my end uh, what this... Uh, this cake oh. bird is. It's actually a real bird. <laughs> it's not a cake, for those of you that are wondering. Um, I'm, I'm actually uh, on, on vacation right now visiting my parents, and uh, their internet speed was not uh, good enough, and so we have just found a, a, a kind neighbor <laughs> who is willing to let us uh, do, do this training from their home, and I guess he's a cowboy and a hunter, so <laughs> so and I guess he likes turkeys. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> on to our question. So yeah, that's not a that's not a cake. I haven't done that. Although it's really cool if it was a cake. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um let's see. Someone says for a relief mold versus an impression mold, would you recommend the other type of silicone? Um, so you could have a raised design? Yeah, I think, again, um, each of these silicones are intentionally made for one type of uh, imprint or another, one type mm -hmm. of mold or another. Um, I have a tendency to use the silicone plastique for things like brooches, um, figurines, you know, those types of things, um, just because it's, it's quick, it's fast, you're just imprinting right over top of something that's really solid. In this case, mm -hmm. because it's a custom pattern, um, I think this is really the only way that it would work. Uh, I'm sure we could figure out and brainstorm some other ways to make this work yeah. too, but um, in order to get the imprint into this um, so that when you press it into a cake you get an imprinted pattern versus a raised pattern, I think yeah. um, using the, the poured uh, silicone is the best option here. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I would definitely agree with you because, you know, it, using the, the, the plastique where you have to press it, that would mess up right. the... That's yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be really gentle with the clay, not to not to push mm -hmm. and disturb your pattern. And I think um, the silicone plastic really is a, a, a hard putty. It's not super soft. I mean, it's pliable, but um, it's really firm. And so you'd have to push so hard to get it into the grooves of this type of um, clay that I don't think it would work very well. Okay. All right. We have uh, one from Joan Spence. She says, I'm about to set into an adventure with my first mold experiment. Okay. I have some ceramic pieces I made that I'll be pressing into the medium. Okay. And nothing states what kind of a finish, and it's straight up bisque, no glaze. Uh, will, okay. I need to, will I need a barrier, do you think, or should I be okay? You know, um, that's a tough one. If it's a porous texture, you'll definitely need a barrier. Um, if it's smooth and um, and it doesn't have any like holes in it, I think you should be just fine. Um, the silicone is not super sticky once it dries, so most things peel away from this fairly easily. They do make um, a product, and I apologize, it's going to slip my mind right at the moment, um, but they do make a product that's kind of like a Vaseline type uh, product. Um, I think it's called sealed it, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but you can put it over type of any type of surface, um, and you just have to rub it in, and then it will prevent the mold from sticking to it. So that could be an option. Um, I know that Make Your Own Molds, uh, he does a fabulous job, by the way, uh, not only making the mold products for us, but he has a lot of online tutorials as well right on the website. So I encourage you to take a peek at that, because he might be able to give you some additional information as far as what types of surfaces to use. Great. And again, those of you that may have come in late, um, we actually have a discount for those of you that want to go to Marvelous Mold. Uh, I, I believe it's just MarvelousMold.com. 
Is that right? I think, um, I think makeyourownmold.com. Oh, yes, makeyourownmold, yeah. And there's a 15% a discount for anyone who orders the silicone plastique. So it is, uh, it's going to be 15% off. Uh, when you get to the checkout, type in cake foo. So, and that'll get you your mm. discount, which is fun. So. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. My son is a self-taught cake artist, and I'm amazed at the cakes he's been able to create. My question is, were you more of a designer first or baker? I'd like to see him hone his baking skills, which you... Uh, what she really shies away from, and what advice would you give him? Yeah, so uh, from a baking perspective, I will say I grew up baking with my grandmother. I use um, a handful of her recipes, my recipes have kind of just adapted things. Um, I do think that having a really great tasting cake is just as important as having a cake that looks great too. So um, I do think it's super important to kind of go down both avenues. Um, with that said though, I'm not a pastry chef. Um, I'm not even a trained artist. Um, I've taken a lot of small classes here and there, one day seminar type things. Um, so I really feel that if you if you have that artistic nature um, to yourself, you can really set your mind to anything and do whatever it is that you'd like. You don't have to have special training, although it is helpful. Um, I won't say don't go to pastry school, but um, you know it really just depends on what direction you want to take um, your career and, and what it is that you'd like to do with it. Um, Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a lot of people um, that have worked for me, some of which are pastry chefs and some of which are um, accountants, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's one of those things that if you have that artistic ability, you really can do whatever you want. And you don't necessarily need training um, for baking, but it, it definitely helps. It does. You know, if I can add my little bit in there, I, I never was formally trained as far as baking, but I do know a lot about baking now. Mm -hmm. um, and really it comes down to practicing a lot and reading a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I, you can go to your library and, and check out dozens of books about baking, you know, and it talks about the science of it and, and all of that. And, you know, to the point where you can, you know, create your own recipes and you can you know, really just the sky is the limit and you can, you know, always get a good cake every exactly. time. So, so just a lot of, a lot of studying, uh, even if you don't do, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a, a pastry school mm -hmm. program. So, I mean, of course, I, I would love to go and do a pastry school program someday, <laughs> but, you know, maybe once my kids are all grown and, <laughs> who knows, we'll see. <laughs> Okay. Uh, someone's asking, do we have to warm the poured silicone? Not at all. Nope. You just use it at room temperature. Um, you mix it together really well. And um, I know in the first slide I showed that I had two different cups of the silicone, um, the orange and the white. Um, you want to get a bigger container, obviously, to mix them together in one place and then pour it into uh, the clay box. Um, but yeah, it just room temperature. And depending upon how hot or cold it is, the curing time will vary a little bit. So that's why I say about five hours. I think it will depend on each individual's, um, you know, the humidity and the temperature and the location that you're making it. Um, so just do that quick test and you'll, you'll know that it's ready, but just room temp. Okay, awesome. Okay, we're going to take one more question. Let's see, I'm going to hear an echo. I don't know what's going on here. Um, let's see, do you use both sugar flowers and fresh flowers on your cakes? I do, and that's actually a great question because I cover that in my Craftsy class as well. Um, I use, it, my preference is to use sugar flowers, and I think the main reason for that is just, um, it's one of my passions. I really enjoy making sugar flowers. I think they're beautiful. Um, I think they just add one more element to the cake that's a little more unique, that um, makes it custom and makes um, makes the guests at the event really kind of say, wow, you know, um, I can't believe they made that out of sugar. Um, 
Um, so I certainly uh, do both. Um, I'm totally fine with using fresh flowers as well. Sometimes budgets don't allow for sugar flowers. They're labor intensive and expensive. So if my client um, prefers to use fresh, I'm totally fine with that. Um, but I do go through in the crafty class and how to kind of prep your cake for those and um, how to use a fresh flower without um, transferring uh, things like pesticides. And, and there are some fresh flowers out there that are poisonous. So you do need to be very, very careful with what you're using on your cake. Um, and the best way to really um, place flowers on cakes is to have it in a separate container if possible. Um, whether that be a little plastic tube that the stem is, is stuck into and then the tube itself is put into the cake or whether you make a, sort of a dome of fondant or buttercream to insert the flower stems into. It's, it's just really important that you don't just jam the stem right into the cake itself. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. so you got to yeah. be careful, but you certainly yeah. can do it. <laughs> and I would second everything that you just said. I know that someone said uh, for both of you, is the question is for both of us. So sure, I, sure. Yeah, I would second everything. I don't know why I'm getting an echo. Um, okay, so um, I, I did see someone was saying, oh, I wasn't talking about the bird behind Amelia. I was talking about the bird behind Rachel. Oh, <laughs> <it's your> cake. <laughs> Excellent. So how did you, did you paint that bird on? And, and how I did. You yeah, so uh, the cake behind me, there's two cakes actually that have birds on them. The one with the green ruffles on the bottom is uh, a series of branch work with a, a bird and they're all hand painted. And then um, the there is another cake in the bird cage that's hanging back there as well. Um, and that has a painted bird as well. Um, but I was uh, approached by a local magazine to do a photo shoot on how to Coloradoize your wedding cake because we're here in Colorado um, and uh, we were just going to do a feature within the magazine and they loved it so much they actually made it as the cover which is exciting but um, the yeah they're hand painted and so similar to how I uh, imprinted the pattern onto the clay um, I do the same tech uh, technique on fondant um, so I took a pattern of a bird and etched it into the fondant and removed the piece of paper and then hand painted over top of it. So um, you can kind of use a lot of the things that I taught you in today's tutorial um, in a lot of different applications. That's kind of, you know, what I love so much about sugar is you can really um, use so many different techniques and uh, create different things um, by, by using them just in a slightly different fashion. So. Okay, well, thank you so much, Rachel, for coming on. You taught us, you know, something really neat and wonderful, and I'm very glad that you did because that was just like an aha moment for me. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could share, and thank you so much for having me as well. All right, and thank you guys for listening. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, oh, I really appreciate all of you guys and, and the fun things you guys bring to Cake Food. So. <laughs> All right, and I guess we'll see you guys all next week. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>